Hello everybody, my name is Eric, and today we're going to be talking about the situation with Winlater. Winlater is a program, a bit like Steam Proton, that enables you to run Windows games on Android phones, something I would have never imagined was even possible. But in fact, because Android is based on Linux, it is possible. So this software is quite something, but the latest version had a what seems to have been an accidental software supply chain issue and led to malware being distributed. So Redditors discovered this. PSA, Winlater and Forks reported to be infected by a virus. Test D3D. We've got both versions of the file here, actually. And what doesn't help this case is the clean version of test D3D. I've got it here and the infected version are both known to get detected by antivirus because a lot of those lower level programs will get false detections, but this one is legitimately malware. This one is clean. People uh, noticed it, the virus is called Floxif. Now Floxif is in fact a file infector virus, which is where this seems to have happened. So a lot of people are skeptical, and I don't blame them for being skeptical. How does this happen? Well, it's a bit like if you remember the I am sorry virus video I made a few weeks ago, where I showed a virus that simply adds I am sorry to your computer on images. Uh, similarly, this is a classical virus, a file infector, and some developer here accidentally shipped it. Also, it seems that Winlater went closed source. Yeah, no, this is an unacceptable thing to happen. And uh, what is utterly embarrassing here is they did have a discussion on the GitHub. Someone says, is this a virus? And the first response is, no, it's not a virus. You can close it. Never use virus total. The virus false positive amounts are crazy. To be fair, this isn't entirely wrong, but you need uh, to actually check this stuff. Uh, no, it's not a virus. You can close it. It's false positive. In fact, it wasn't a false positive, but the developer who believed it was a false positive closed the issue at this point. Now, before we take a deeper dive on this, I did just want to take a quick break for today's sponsor. Imagine two approaches for office security, a facial recognition system that identifies prohibited individuals, or one that recognizes only authorized personnel. You choose the latter, right? So why approach your organization's cybersecurity any differently? This video is sponsored by ThreatLocker, a zero-trust cybersecurity solution designed to protect your organization by default. Implementing ThreatLocker is straightforward. Simply install ThreatLocker in learning mode, let it automatically identify all the software your organization uses, and then switch to secure mode. Now no unauthorized software can execute without explicit permission. Need to run potentially risky software? ThreatLocker's ring-fencing feature securely restricts applications, allowing them to perform only essential functions. For instance, if you use PowerShell for automation, ThreatLocker can block its internet access, significantly reducing attack vectors. Ready to enhance your organization's security with a zero-trust approach? Visit ThreatLocker.com slash Eric Parker, or click the link in the description to learn more today. Now back to the video. Not a false positive, someone figured it out! Oh no. So, I got the file here, and we can go over and see the virus total detection for the legit one and the infected one. This is the clean file. Now, it does have a fair amount of detections. These are essentially all machine learning detections, which simply means that statistically some aspects of the file, like whether it's signed or not, the import table, are statistically similar to malware. That doesn't mean anything. Uh, there's also a pack detection, which is simply a false positive. Now let's look at the infected version of this file. Win32 fix flow, Floxif, Floxif, Floxif. One of the ways you can tell that you're dealing with a real piece of malware is if a lot of scanners name it something, not something like whack at that, something real, and you Google that, and that's a real thing, uh, and that's a red flag. Another one. Uh, Kaspersky tends to have pretty good uh, signatures, so you can see a ton of a ton of hits for this. So, what is Floxif? Well, Trend Micro has a pretty nice article explaining that. Floxif is a file infector. Now, file infectors work in such a manner where, as the name would suggest, they will add malicious code to every exe on your system. 
The reason for doing so is partially so that even if you reinstall Windows, if you're not careful and you copy a file back over, you can end up infected. It also enables these things to survive forever, given they don't need a C2 server to keep working, and potentially end up being distributed unintentionally, just like that ground.exe, uh, which got sent on a bunch of file sharing sites because people would upload files without knowing they were infected. Okay, so now let's test this on the Anyone Sandbox. Now, I believe we will have to download DirectX 9 in order to make the malicious payload work, because it will simply otherwise hit a DLL import. And doing that, we can confirm what's actually going on with this, because initially, it just immediately crashes. But uh, we were already able to detect the Floxif infection. I believe if we download DirectX 9, uh, we will actually get to see this in action. Until this uh, installer for DirectX 9 is outdated by the fact it's trying to get us to agree to install the Bing Bell, which hasn't existed for a few decades at this point. So it seems like the error message here might actually be a decoy rather than... Yeah, because the moment, moment I affirm that, uh, it seems to go off. So, all right then. Okay, so I wanted to take a bit of a closer look. Something else I should point out, because this is an Android app. Will this infect your phone? No, it won't. It's a random old virus, uh, not something that was likely done intentionally. So the only real risk is that the Windows environments, I should call them, because they're not actually VMs, on WinLater can be infected, which means you don't want to be copying any files from those VMs to a Windows computer, sharing, really I wouldn't share them anywhere, and they may also cause crashing like this seems to have. So let's try debugging this with x64 debug, and Windows Defender, which I just turned off, has just come back. And interestingly, and we might actually try that in a second, Windows Defender not only has the option to remove the threat, but it also has the option to clean the virus. That might be worth a try in a second, because like many of these old infection viruses, which are real viruses, they can actually be removed. So let's try this out. So the application does immediately throw an access violation. And this occurs right here. Let me just see what my settings are. I'm going to put more breakpoints on so that maybe we can catch it before it breaks. No, we can't. Okay. So we're not going to learn much by debugging this. But now let's see. Uh, what if we uh, go to our allowed threats, and then we allow Defender to do what it was offering to do for us? Let's just simply uh, scan this with Windows Defender, and it finds a threat. So let's see now. It says it can clean the threat, and let's see how that works. And now it will claim that it's been cleaned. So let's see if this actually works. The file does seem to be a bit smaller than the infected version, because the infected version is 582 uh, kibby bytes, and this one is 506 kibby bytes. And no, I am not mispronouncing that. Okay. So now let's actually try uh, DirectX 9 download. Let's actually try installing DirectX on this VM and see if the recovered app works. This is something you don't really see nowadays, uh, but this is real antivirus activity where a file is infected and that can in some cases be non-destructively removed because the malicious modification is usually just appended. The real program is still there. In this case, it seems like at least on modern computers, the malicious functionality doesn't quite work right. I did try on older VMs on any run as well, and that didn't work either, so I think it's safe to say this payload isn't quite working right anymore. But it may work under Wine, which is how this Android emulator is going to work. The key to how this uh, malware will add itself is it will replace the code that should run. Uh, it will append, uh, in the beginning, there's a table for Windows executable files uh, saying that the start of the code is somewhere else, the operating system will then start from that other section, the malicious code, and probably at the end of the malicious code there will be a jump to the correct, to the real code. And now let's try the fixed version, and in fact, it does work. Look at that. Look how cute it is. It's a spinning cube that is in fact testing. And yes, uh, that is the graphics scale the VM has now. I actually upgraded it from the 1080, because 
that had suddenly developed a reset bug. So now we've got a slightly newer uh, graphics card. Now let's try downloading the virus again. I am just curious if now that we've installed the dependency, I don't expect it to work, but we could see if the virus will now work again. We're going to allow this one on device, but it doesn't look like it's going to cooperate. I do have one last ditch idea that maybe it's related to exploit protection. And now we've got all of that uh, security disabled. I don't think that will make a difference, but I did just want to try one more thing. Okay, so it does still throw the same, same uh, things. Although, interestingly, I get far more detections in Defender. So then, that is going to be all uh, for this video. I've looked through this a fair amount. I've actually looked at the files side by side in a disassembler. Um, we can see that, yeah, there's a bit of code injected, and that's what makes this magic work. Um, what should you do if you've been affected? Well, the main thing I would suggest is not down, not using this version. The author has actually released a new version, although he's also now said that he's going on hiatus. So update the app, delete every instance that used the infected version, uh, and you should be good to go. Ultimately, there's no way for this to spread to the launcher Android because it simply wasn't designed to. There is some debate about whether Wine is a sandbox or not. It isn't, but that doesn't mean that magically malware can just escape and do things. The malware would have to be programmed to take advantage of Wine, which in this case it isn't. So that's going to be all for me for now. Bye.